Hi, hey, ho everyone. My name's Mr. Fruit, and welcome to the Division Two. Thank you very much to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. Got a chance to go and get hands-on early with the game. What you're gonna see in this video is some early game. Uh, I'm sorry about this part. Listen, I just I had to. Bambi! I had to I had to see if I could do it. I'm sorry. So what you're watching now is the prologue. And don't forget to go to the description box down below and click the link to learn more about the Division 2. So you are in DC in Division 2. This takes place seven months after the outbreak, pretty much when the initial division was set. This time though, obviously you're in DC, it's a completely different setting. It's no longer that iconic snow setting they had, which I was worried they wouldn't be able to build a world that was as enticing and engrossing as, you know, snowy New York, because it was just iconic. It looked beautiful, but I gotta say, the, the change of pace with like the openness of DC, they, they, it's magical. Not only that, but some of the graphical feats uh, I'll point out in some of these clips I show, it's actually insane. So yeah, what you're seeing right now is the prologue. You gotta storm the White House because people be trying to take it over. That's right, you gotta storm the White House and take it over because it's your boo, which is just short for your base of operations in Division 2, much like you had one in Division 1. In this one, you upgrade the White House, get upgrades, you know, people there help you craft things, whatnot. Now, while this intro is kind of playing out, the living world they're going for with the Division, especially a lot of what you're gonna be playing up until you get to the end game, which I'll talk about in another video. I have some end game stuff to show you, but we'll get to that later. The open world of Division 2 is simulated by the behaviors of survivors in an urban environment, obviously being DC, but not only survivors as in like allies, but also enemy factions. They're going to be roaming around DC looking for their own supplies and everything. And it's kind of um, a tug of war. So there are control points you can find. Enemy factions will control that. You can storm it and claim it for your settlements, but then the enemy faction can try and take it back. And so there's always this like mini game inside of it about capturing zones and helping upgrade your settlements. I'll show a quick little thing of settlements here in a second. Settlements are like not quite your base of operations, but fellow survivors who you're trying to help, they're starting to make their own cities and not only can you upgrade the base of operations, but as you go and do things and help out settlements and get control points, you're gonna start upgrading those settlements. So all those people are gonna love you and be like, thanks so much. But here we go, finally retaken the White House. We get a nice little cinematic view of the whole place here. No one thought they'd go to DC, but it just makes sense, you know? You gotta literally like rebuild government. You're the last hope, man. And so, as the last line of defense, they say, and I quote, your actions will influence the power struggle across DC. Now what you're seeing right here is the theater settlement, the first settlement we gotta see in this little demo, and this is one of the examples. So right now this is bare bones, we just get there, but as you do things, you can upgrade it. And visually they change, and then you can, you can get new stuff in the settlement, some people will show up that you can then hire, they'll go back to your base of operations, like one of the people I got from that settlement went back and I think was like helping me with crafting. Also, as we play through this, just like graphically, just freaking look at this game. And the weather changes, so obviously you don't have that same snow, but this was a nice little happen, a happening that uh, we came across, fog. It was so beautiful, and so I'm just showing a fight here. It completely changed how this firefight would have gone otherwise. You can barely see anything, you gotta get up close. Look at it, it's just beautiful. Like, this whole game was spectacular. As you can see, this video is in 4K, and I was playing on the Xbox One X. It actually ran buttery smooth. And here's the bane of my existence. This little woman with her baton. I died to her, I can't tell you how many times. Just rushing me and beat me down. Now, a big concern a lot of people have from Division 1, and rightfully so, is the whole bullet sponge thing. That's kind of what I want to talk about and touch on this video, aside from the beautiful graphics. Just, like, more touching on, on the whole fog situation. There are new weather elements, and they said instead of, like, huge snowstorms, expect, like, crazy thunderstorms, apparently. And I love me some thunderstorms. And they're saying all the weather is independent of each other, so you could get a crazy thunderstorm with fog. And that sounds crazy. But there's a whole bunch of different weather effects that will impact gameplay like that, like you would expect back in the original Division with snow and whatnot, sometimes uh, impairing your visibility. 
The bullet sponges, that's one of the big things I want to touch on, because I know some of my friends, I know I had problems with it in the first game, most of the people did. It's much better in this game. That's a big thing they touched on. And it's not, ten, I'm, I'm not here to talk too much about Endgame, but they're talking about even in Endgame, these red health enemies, they're very prevalent. It's no longer like, oh, you're just getting higher level, well, we're just gonna throw a whole bunch of elites at you, right? It's still balanced and and makes it so that, like, you don't feel like you're just fighting these bullet sponges. The bosses now, I think I have, like, a small footage somewhere, they have armor. There's this new armor system, so they don't just have big health. What you need to do is coordinate with your team, shoot down a certain armor on an elite, it'll open up a weak point, the rest of his body may still have that armor until you, you know, knock it off. But he's gonna have that little bit open, and right here, just so you know, I'm looking at the Quartermaster, so this is where you can get skills, um, perks, all that kind of stuff. So this is just uh, showing what was in the beta and whatnot. So I was looking at, you know, there's different ways you can upgrade the um, the mine and the, the drones and everything, like explosive or air burst, and then you'll see all the skills. Anyway, so you knock the armor off, and then their like their health melts essentially. Once you get that armor off, it's you know they have just as little health as everybody else. So it speeds up the gameplay, especially if you're able to focus fire with your teammates. When we first started facing some of these like huge armored dudes at the very beginning, we were having a tough time fighting them. We're like, oh my god, it kind of felt a little bullet spongy. But just them, oh, everybody else it was feeling pretty good. But by the end of it, we would, you know, there was like a, a scenario where I think we had like two or three of these huge armored dudes come at us and like bop, bop, bop. We just, we had it down to like a science. So we're all focused fire in the same, the same spot. It'll like verbally tell you like armor's broken. And then when you're shooting, you can tell when you're, you know, shooting where the armor isn't. And yeah, once you learn to like focus fire, where to shoot and all that kind of stuff, you just start melting them. So a part of it was just, you know, learning. And yeah, that was, that's something I'm very happy to report about. Now I didn't get to play too much end game. It'll still obviously be there somewhat, right? Like, there's got to be a, a nice, fine balance of, like, difficulty. But making it a little more grounded, right? Because that was that was everybody's thing. How does this guy in New York City with a hoodie eat 400 light machine gun rounds? That's what they're trying to fix. And that's, like, going in, that was my number one thing. I was like, all right, like, if I'm going to get invested in this, damn it, there's no more bullet sponges. And there's not. Additionally, their end game, whoo, it's looking good. And I'll be covering more of the end game in my next Division 2 video. We're essentially looking at early game. I categorize early game as pretty much the campaign up until you get to the end game, which they talk about. There are still like more campaign like missions for end game, but again, not what we're talking about. So the, uh, the critical path through the story is the early to mid game, where you essentially start leveling up understanding the game, understanding the mechanics, the concepts, get better at it, adapt, go through the loot system, learn crafting, essentially preparing yourself for the end game activities, as well as getting you through the story, which is obviously DC's been overrun with all these things. There's like factions called like the hyenas and the, I wanna say the other one's like coyotes or something. Don't quote me on that. I think there's an elite enemy in here somewhere in this battle you're watching right now. Um, for those that don't know divisions, so like, red health enemies are just, like, you know, peasants. I don't know what you would call it. Purple are the next step, and then yellow health is, like, elites, or whatever you'd want to call them. They're the hardest to kill, obviously. But you'll see somewhere in here, you start shooting him. As soon as his armor breaks, he just... He's done. There's the elite enemy, by the way. Skills in this game, they want to make it less, like, use and forget, and more, well, skillful. So, a lot of the skills... I want to use and stuff, they're more uh, interactive, I guess. If I want to use the mine, I have to tell it where to go. I don't just like throw it and then it just like with the turret. A cool thing about the turret, not this turret, although this was sick, just lighten some suckers up. It was in this mission and I couldn't resist. It was amazing. So the, the personal turret's making a return from Division 1, but this time you can like tell it which enemies to target or sometimes if you don't keep telling it what to shoot it just won't do anything so you act like that's part of the game system for you and also i got knocked off the stupid turret because these baton people and i'm like sick let me get back on this and swoop this guy just comes right in the audacity but whatever dude cheering is caring or something like that whatever man and take a look at this graphically like look just look at how dense 
the world and the streets are. It, it's a nice change of pace to like see the open air and stuff because Division, you know, it felt very claustrophobic. You had all these big buildings around you. This is just like a nice change of pace. You know what I'm saying? In here, in this clip, uh, we are trying to take a control point. So these pop up in the map. Uh, there's certain strongholds, and this is one. So it's like the enemies have this control point. So we got to go in there, get them all out, and then we would then control that point. It would help settlements. But then you got to be careful because the enemy will still want the control point later on and will try and seize it back and probably will at some point. So you have to keep, like I was mentioning, fighting over these control points because friendly and enemy factions fight for it. It also triggers new activities related to the faction or group and control. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but like enemies will be, you know, prowling through the open world. And if there is a certain enemy that has more control points or something, you're going to see more of them on the streets. But if you're able to take away a lot of their stuff, there's going to be less people on the streets. You know, clean it up. And also, you'll see right there, there's a cool little intro to the mission, and I miss the explosion. And you also had this mission right here, or part of a mission, that myself and everyone else that was playing it just took notice. We really enjoyed this, like, little interior fight. There's verticality to it. The shooting was fun. I, I don't know what it reminded me of, but it was just a nice little change of pace. Because you were going from like these really close corridors to these big open environments. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a nice change of pace. Should also note the weapon system has kind of changed a little bit. I believe weapon perks are now universal, I think. And so like every weapon can roll with them. But on top of that, the attachments are now not attached to in-game loot. You won't find attachments as loot. Instead, you craft or get those through like the Quartermaster back at the base of operations. Now they've added other stuff to the loot pool to account for that. And also here, you'll see that big armor guy I was talking about. So you can see he's got a big old thing and shooting him doesn't do too much. Like you're barely damaging him. But once you get off an armor plate, you start shooting. Unfortunately, I couldn't show you much because then I was running away from these people and I nearly died and it's embarrassing. But there's a lot I want to talk about in the Division 2. And honestly, I have really high hopes. The shooting was tight, fun, loot, obviously, I'm in it to win it, you know what I mean? And I haven't even mentioned the upgraded Dark Zone and PvP and stuff. That'll be for another video. But essentially, they've taken everything they've learned from Division 1, put it into Division 2. It's looking like an absolutely amazing game. And they... <laughs> They're not paying me to say my opinions. Like, I genuinely went there, I played it, and I was like, okay, I'm all in. But if you were a fan of The Division 1, or you were hesitant, you liked it, but you needed some changes, or, you know, quality of life, or, or you wanted to, to get the next best iteration, this is it. This is the best time to jump into it, my friends. So with that said, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Let me know if there's something more specific you guys would want me to touch in the next video alongside Endgame. And remember, be sure to go down in the description box below to learn more about The Division 2. But with that said, thanks again to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. Have yourselves a fantastic day. I'll talk to you in the next one. Farewell.